my mortal flesh. <coughs> Christ in me. Not, oh, it's in my spirit, you see. But oh, the flesh is weak. Oh. Get born again. Is that plain? Hello? Is that plain? You know, when you start seeing what the Bible... Here's Paul writing to these philosophers and, uh, and the people have gone so wrong and he's saying, what on earth are you getting so confused about? Come back. You know, life begins with Christ. We have life and life more abundant. Hey, if sin was so good, you've got ten times a better life when Christ comes. You know, when people go after the world and give up the ways of God, it's because they failed to grow in grace and truth and they left the essential thing which is Christ in you, in your mortal flesh. And they start looking for something else. Who now rejoice, verse 24, in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh. And you know, Christ is in my flesh. He, he not in my spirit. Christ in you. You know, you can't confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh but by the Holy Ghost. He, he not, God, God isn't somehow in your spirit somewhere. It, my Bible says we have this treasure in the earthen vessel. What's the earthen vessel? Your flesh. It's not your spirit. Isn't that right? Hey, there's such a lot of false doctrine gone around. Um, and Paul was refuting it. Uh, verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. For I would, chapter 2, verse 1, I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, <laughs> for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may, might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Where do the treasures of wisdom and knowledge abide? Where do the treasures of wisdom and knowledge abide? Huh? Not in Ford. Miss Ford. Probably Ms. Ford, you've got to say. Yuck. Where do the treasures of wisdom and knowledge abide? In God the Father and in Christ. Is that plain? Hello? You know, so many people, they end up following false philosophies. Hey, Paul said, look, what conflict I'm suffering trying to bring to you the truth. And I'll tell you this, if you want conflict, preach Christ. If you want conflict, stand up to people who are going wrong. If you want conflict, you've got to, if you want to be a pastor... If you want to be something, you've got to stand up to the old goats. You've got to stand up to the people. And I'll tell you what, they don't give you a box of chocolates. And if you do, I won't eat them. <laughs> you know, the moment you tell someone that the way they're living is wrong, they think you're attacking them. The way, when you tell them what they think and the way they're going is wrong, they take it as personal attack. 
And they get violent in their minds, if not in their words. They don't like to be challenged. Paul said, I, I, I endure this conflict. Boy, pastoring anyone is misery. You know, it really is. I'll tell you why. Do you want to know? Because the thing you have to do is you have to preach the truth and people take it personally. And then they turn on you because in their sin-sick little hearts they hate someone to challenge them. Light manifests darkness. What's dark inside you, as soon as light comes, comes right to the top. And it's ugly. That's why you need to get born again. And Paul says, I'm suffering conflict. Poor. I, I, you know, I, 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 people can sit for years listening and be as dead as dead can be. And you think, how can they be so dead? I'll tell you, they've got the gift of death. You're meant to have the gift of life. <laughs> Paul says, I've got this conflict. He said, uh, he said <laughs> that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love. And to all riches a full assurance of understanding. To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man beguile you with enticing words. Do you know, I find people are conned by other people who come along with enticing words. Well, you know, yeah, I know he said that, but, you know, it, it doesn't really mean that. You know, well, yeah, well, the Bible, yeah, well, but, but, you know, I, and... And the next thing you know, they entice you away from Christ. For, though I be absent in the flesh, yet I'm with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein in thanksgiving. Look, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Do you know, how you receive is how you've got to live. The trouble is, people receive and then start living a different way than how they received. When I received Christ, it was simple. 